So we're looking at our forces, unit review, uh, written section, what are you going to see? I'm going from memory. There's two different versions of the tests, and my classes are writing different versions. You'll have four or five written questions. What will you see? I guarantee something like this, except let me change the numbers because I stole this from your review. How about let's make this 9.3 meters per second, and let's give me a mu of uh, 0.5. Five, four. Except let's write it underneath Mr. Duick so it lines up a little better. And hey, now it's a whole new question. What I mean by this is I guarantee somewhere on the written section you're going to see a block on a ramp and I'm going to ask you to find the acceleration and do something with the acceleration. Find the time, find it. Well, in fact, AJ, what's this question asking me to find? Yeah, AJ, you may consider sitting at the front. I don't know, but based on the way you were squinting there, my, I, I'll leave you alone. Just whatever, back row boy. So I would say to myself, well, I would say, I guess V final, yeah, uh, V initial, yeah. Well, if I want to find distance, what else do I need if I actually wanted to find distance? Oh, you know what, Josh? Even though it says find distance, I'm going to spend a lot of time finding the acceleration here. OK. So how would I find the acceleration? Why? I think I'd start labeling the forces. What are the forces acting on this block, AJ? Get the obvious one. What else? Normal force, Eek. which way, you said friction, which way, which way is the block moving? From the diagram, it seems pretty clear with that dotted line, it's moving down. So which way is friction acting? What if the block was moving up, which way would friction be acting? Yeah. Down, okay. So, but we have this. Then I'll break gravity up into its components. I'll break it up into perpendicular and parallel. Is that OK so far? Hey, what's my force equation going to be when I do my tug of war, winner minus loser stick? What's it going to be? Who's winning? Why is mg parallel why is mg parallel not winning? How do you know that mg parallel can't be winning? If it's coming to a rest, which way is it accelerating? Up the hill. Which means which way is winning? Up the hill. Who's winning? Okay, so for this one, my equation is going to look like this. Friction minus parallel. That's what equals MA. By the way, what if it was sliding uphill? Which way would friction be acting? Downhill. And which way is gravity acting? Downhill. Then your equation would be winner plus winner equals MA. There'd be no, there wouldn't be a minus sign there. There'd be a plus sign there. Uh, I'm trying to think, oh, what if it wasn't moving at all? then it's a tie, it's winner minus loser equals zero, and then you can get the stuff by, okay? Really, that, that's the only possibility. It's moving uphill, accelerating, it's moving downhill, accelerating, or it's a constant speed or at rest. Okay. Um, hey, friction is what times what? Mu times a normal force. I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 I don't know the force. Yeah, you've seen that little dance before. So this is gonna be mu mg perpendicular minus mg parallel equals MA. It's going to be mu mg. Hey, which trig function is perpendicular? Of course it is. Minus mg sine. Conveniently, in this one, the mass cancels. If they didn't cancel, I just divide by m to get the a by itself. And I'm going to get. A equals, I got to scroll up. What did I say mu was? 0.54, see it there? 
and theta is 15. Okay, so it's going to be 0.54 times 9.8 times the cosine of 15 minus 9.8 times the, hey, cos, Mr. Duick? Sine of 15. Now, there could be a problem because I made these numbers up and I lowered mu, I made it slipperier. It's possible friction might not be winning after all. So we'll find, how, how would I know that friction wasn't winning and that Mr. Duick had screwed up? I'd get a negative acceleration. I hope I get a positive. Anybody try this yet? Let's find out. Please work. 0.54 times 9.8 times the cos of 15 minus 9.8 times the sine of 15. Whew. Oh, good. Friction is winning. Do you get 2.75, 2.575, blah, 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 that? Yes? 2.5, hello. 0.75 meters per second squared. Problem. AJ, that's not what they're asking me to find. What did you say they're asking me to find? Okay, so now I can walk over here and I can say uh, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. What did you say they're asking me to find? You're looking, you're going to make it, mister? Because you're looking bad. Bah! Nothing. Sorry, I got this row here, and I freaked out my computer. Uh, get the D by itself, AJ. Good, AJ. That was excellent. Move forwards! Okay. Well, both you guys move forwards. All three, you know what? All three of you, since that just left, all three of you, Right here, one, two, three, I got room, bring it up. I'm giving up my free time, it's not a request, let's go. I'm not giving up my free time for a tutorial, it's not gonna work. Josh, Mark, move up. Mark can come to his regular seat where he learns best anyways. Is this right, folks, yes? Uh, and I'll get this, zero squared minus 9.3 squared. Yeah, AJ, sit by AJ, right, yeah, there you go. All over two. And I'm about to make a mistake. See if you can figure out where I'm about to make a mistake. I made a mistake. Why? Is it slowing down or speeding up? It's coming to a stop. I'm going to have to then, because we're going back to the last unit where slowing down always meant negative, I'm going to have to insert a negative. If you didn't catch that, I think you'd notice it anyhow, Kelly, because you'd go like this, 0 squared minus 9.3 squared, and you'd go divided by 2 times, and you'd use your answer button, and you'd catch it because you got a negative distance, and you'd say, say, what? And then you'd go back and you'd redo the question. I think the answer is positive, 16.8. So the whole point of that, Peter, is I'm going to give you block, ramp, friction, do something with it, not just find A. Kind of fun. Okay? Johnson. Are you listening to my lessons? Oh, oh you are? Okay. You're not listening to headphones elsewhere? Okay. A little, little going to freak out. Oh, I see. Your hoodie looks like a, the, the white, that looks like a headphone going into your ear from this angle. I was going to freak, but no. Calm. Okay. What else did I say is on your written? Brie, a lawnmower question. Like this. And this. What I mean by a lawnmower question is either pushing down at an angle or pushing up at an angle. I don't think I'm going to give you lawnmower on a ramp. That's overkill. Okay? So here's a question, except we're going to change the numbers. We're going to say 55. We're going to say uh, question mark and I'm going to say, oh, so you're all not writing down the words anyways. So you're writing down the diagram. Here's the question I'm going to ask. 
Suppose this doesn't move. What is the coefficient of friction? Minimum coefficient of friction, because it could be bigger. But OK. I guess it's not suppose this doesn't move. Suppose this doesn't move. So we apply a 55 Newton force. We do have a mass of 7 kilograms. So if you're copying down the diagram, you can say m equals 7 kilograms. If we apply a, if we apply a force of 55 Newtons at an angle of 24 degrees, and it doesn't go anywhere. In other words, if I did this, but it didn't move. Sorry, that was terrible. Let's try that again. If I did this and it didn't move, that was completely fake. Um, What's the minimum coefficient of friction? Care to guess how we're going to start? Free body. Uh, label our forces. Right, Ryan? I know, but I'm picking on you. You ready? OK, going to pick on you because I like you so much. Hey, what are the forces acting on this block? Get the obvious one. Yes. Mrs. Hang Bell, on here. Boy. Switchboard, Mrs. Bellick. Contact switchboard, please. These announcements drive me crazy. You said that, yeah? Yeah, and then the whole course. Now, here's the issue. I'm going to do normal force a bit later because it's going to, well, can you guys see, because there's another upwards component from this guy, is the normal force going to be bigger, smaller, or the same size as mg? Can you? Smaller. Did you hear? Listen to the brilliance, my friends. Those of you in the back row, be ashamed. The front row, the front section is where it's at. Speak forth, expound, O oh wise Sahib. What do we got? Uh, the metal is smaller than MG. So if I asked you, <clears throat> pst, pst, look at me. If I asked you to draw, say, a free body diagram for something like this as a separate question, I would probably look for a significantly smaller normal force. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make mg a bit longer and exaggerate it, and then I'll do normal force clearly smaller. OK? Yeah, yeah? What else? Come back to that. And the reason, by the way, the reason I said come back to friction, is this block moving? Oh, yeah, no, it's not. No, so you ready? I'm going to draw friction, pointing which way? Tell me when to stop. Why? What two forces must be the same size if it ain't moving? OK. In other words, if I asked you for the free body diagram, your free body diagram would look like this. Except that might even be a bit long. I don't know. I don't think I'd be too fussy on the friction. I would definitely be fussy on the normal force. That, because that's, to me, the key in solving this question. Okay? And even if it's not a tie, so if it's accelerating, I can't remember whether I made it a tie or whether it's accelerating on your test. Um, I guarantee if you're pulling up, the normal force is what if you're pushing down? I'd look for a normal force. That was? Yeah. OK. <clears throat> Who's winning? OK, this time it's a trick question. It's a tie. You know, I'd probably let to the right be positive, because that's the way that we're pulling. So I would probably go something like this. Winner minus loser equals I was going to go MA, but what's A if we're not moving? Zero. In fact, are you guys OK? I actually probably could have just said this. It's a tie, Give like plus the friction over. Yes? So I'm OK if whichever step you go with. Good, good, good. Hey, Jordan, friction Ms. is what Sarich, time what? Your boss is leaving. Miss Sarich, your boss is leaving. I'm going to try this again. Boy, these tutorials don't work with all these announcements very well. Sorry, friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, ooh. <laughs> yes, Jordan. Look, 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 look. I know ooh, several different, you know what? We're going to have to come back to that. So Jordan, this time, because lawnmower questions are tricky, I'm actually going to write that in. 
Um, I think Jordan, I think that's true, isn't it? The normal force pointing up and Fy pointing up are what cancel out gravity. You okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get the normal force by itself for me, kiddo. How? Um, minus totally. So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do. Hey, by the way, Ryan, here's an algebraic proof, because normally normal force is mg. Oh, of course it's less. You're minusing. We, 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 you can think of it algebraically or from the free body. Yes? Um, we need to do some trig to get an expression for Fy. I kind of think Fy will be psi, but let's just confirm. Let's see. Uh, opposite hypotenuse adjacent. Which trig function is involved for Fy? I think the hypotenuse. I think we end up with Fy is applied sine, which uh, was 55. So the normal force is going to be mg minus 55 sine of 24. The normal force is Hmm. Oh, uh, what was M? I scrolled down. Seven? Yeah. Seven. Okay. Seven, 9.8 minus 55 sine 24. Seven times 9.8 minus 55 sine 24. Do you get 46.23? Well, two, two, three, you know what? 46.23, I can probably round off to four sig figs. Which is going to head over here. By the way, Fx, which is what I have sitting right here, of course it is. I think Fx ends up being F applied cos theta do the trig, but we're cutting corners. So I think this is going to end up being, uh, what was F applied? 55. 55 cos theta. Oh, I asked you to find the coefficient of friction. I guess mu is going to be 50, did I say 54, 55? Is that what I said, 55? 55 yeah. Can't read my own writing, apparently. 55 cos 24 divided by 46.23. And here's hoping I get a mu less than one, kind of a nice answer. I was trying to do a lot of this in my head. Divided by 46.23. Oh, you know what? Divided by answer button, would be more accurate. Oh, okay. So I made up bad numbers. This, is, this would have to be glued to the floor. But you okay with the method, Manisha? It, sorry, this is what happens when I make up stuff. 1.09. Hey, what are the units from you? Okay. Now, another option, I could give you this same situation, a lawnmower question. I could say find the acceleration. That would mean winner minus loser equals MA. Divide by M, find A. Go to town. I don't think the masses will cancel out when you have a lawnmower question. And the reason is you'll have an extra vertical component that M doesn't. You'll, you'll have to find the normal force separately. Okay. Carry it to a few extra sig figs because you're going to use it. So key idea with the lawnmower question, Jordan, look, 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 look. Ooh, the normal. I don't know another force the same size as a normal force. I know another equation that helps me find the normal force. That's our taking it one step further. Is that all right? What else could I ask? Find the acceleration, obviously. Find mu. That's really about it. I'm not going to go much beyond that. So there's our lawnmower. What else? 
I'm probably going to give you some kind of a question where there's two masses and I don't tell you one of them. So I think on the quiz two, I gave you an Atwood machine where there was two masses and I didn't tell you one of them. Here, this is sort of like an Atwood machine, except the cart is on level ground. Uh, I'm going to change stuff, though. I'm going to put a 1 in front of the 8.2. And now it's a whole new question. Okay. Mr. Duick, why don't you put a 1 in front of the 3.5 meter per second squared? Ah, what can't it ever accelerate faster than if it's a falling object that's causing the acceleration? I, I can't ever be bigger. I, I, was, I thought, oh, why don't I make it 13.5? Oh, no, wait a minute. Even in free fall, it wouldn't be bigger than 9.8. There's no way it's accelerating faster than gravity. So, okay. There's our new question. I'm kind of assuming... I'm kind of assuming, Ashley, that you're okay with, uh, if you know both masses, find A. Write a force equation for everything. It'll be winner minus loser equals the mass of both times A. Divide by the mass of both. We're good to go. I am kind of making that assumption because that's going to be on your test as well. Probably a multiple choice. Maybe you're written, but these take a while. I don't want to give you too many written. So let's try this. Hey, Doug, yeah. what are they asking me to find? Uh, what is your mass? Okay. If I knew both masses, I would write an equation for both and find A. I'm going to go backwards. Since I know A and I'm missing one mass, I'm going to write an equation for one mass, the mass that I know. Which mass do I know? Uh, mass what are the forces acting on it? Get the obvious one. What else? What else? Trick question. Nothing. Who's winning? OK. So I can say this. Minus tension equals M2A. Why, Mr. Duick? Why? Because what I'm going to need to do, Petra, is find tension and then use tension to find mass 1 because I'll change colors. What are the forces acting on mass 1? Get the obvious one, Doug. What else? What else? Can you, looking at the mystery mass, who's winning? What's, which way is it accelerating? To the? So which force is winning? Who's losing? It's a trick question. So you know what? Tension equals m 2A. Yeah? I guess that means that M2 is going to be tension divided by A. Right? Divide by A to get M2 by itself, Enzo? Which really, this is why I started out here. I said, you know, if I can find tension, it's going to be over on the other side because I know the acceleration. 3.5. So let's find tension. Now, the only difference, I think, with the Atwood machine on the quiz was we ended up with an equation with both masses still in it, we had to, or with more than one, with two masses, we had to do some factoring. So if you didn't see me going over the take home quiz, Doug and Manisha, whoever else was away, make sure you watch that. If you didn't get, I think this was question two from the big take home quiz. Okay. Uh, anyways, I would go something like this. Uh, Blump, blump. M2G minus M2A equals tension. Tension equals M2 18.2 times 9.8 minus 18. Whoop, try that again, Mr. Duick. Times 3.5. Here, computer. 18.2 times 9.8 minus 18.2 times 3.5. I'm getting a tension of 114.66 newtons. Mass 2 is going to be 
114.66 divided by 3.5. Thirty-two point eight kilograms. So missing a mass, strategy is go look at one mass, find everything you can, then write the single equation for the missing mass, and you should have everything that you need. Okay? The only difference being on the take-home quiz today. Here we go. On the take-home quiz, because we ended up with more than one mass, we had to factor out the GCF to get the M2 by itself. What else are you going to see? Can't remember. Oh, probably two masses, one at an angle or hanging. This says, find the acceleration of the system of masses. I'm just going to change this question and make it a little bit different. How am I going to do that? Fourteen kilograms. There. Done. Now it's a different question. And again, need for all of these, whenever I say find the acceleration, it's always then fair game for me to say to you, now do something with the acceleration. Find time, find distance, find the final, find uh, something. Probably not with a question with an angle and another mass, that's a little overkill, but certainly with one mass and a ramp, I'm totally good. All right. Oh, and I guess Enzo, this one's on wheels, so no friction, this one. Friction. Enzo, what are the forces acting on mass one? Get the obvious one. What else? What else? Tension. Yep. Friction? Yes. 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 What are the forces acting on mass two? Get the obvious one. Put it on this side, Mr. Duick, trust me. What else? What else? What else? Friction? No. What else? Oh, I think nothing. That's the, the free body would be those three forces. Boom, boom, boom. Now let's go components because we are on a ramp. So you're saying M2G perpendicular. All right. Who's winning? Who's winning? Can this possibly be accelerating to the left and pulling this up the hill? No. Nah. You don't suddenly have objects start magically sliding on their own, lifting things uphill. So if it's either a, it's possible it's a tie and it's not going to move in which case I'll get a negative acceleration when I try solving. But for now, what did you say, Enzo? I think you were right. So anything that ends up pointing down the hill when I follow it along the rope, winner plus. Anything that ends up pointing up the hill, loser. Oh, sorry. Minus. Um, so winner. Minus tension plus tension. Oh, I guess minus. Friction, you know what, since there's more than one mass Enzo, I'll call it friction force number one. Even though there's only one friction force, that way I just remember for friction force one, put in mass one, right? And equals what? Equals what? M both A. How do you know it's M both A and not just one of the masses? Oh, does more than one force from more than one mass appear on the left-hand side? Well then, if I got more than one mass on the left-hand side, Forces from more than one mass, I better have the mass of both times A. And I'm pretty sure this time the masses aren't going to cancel. Enzo, how would I get the A? Oh, first of all, Enzo, are you relaxed? Oh, you can't be more relaxed than when you lose tension. 
So no matter how stressed you are on the test on Wednesday or Thursday, there's going to be coming some points when you'll just, your tension will just vanish. While you're writing the test, the tension will vanish. Yeah, but then, Mr. Duick, for part B, you always tell us to find the tension again. Oh. <laughs> Shoot! Don't! Sorry. You're right. Fine. And uh, Enzo, how would I get the A by itself? Divide. Can I do that on one line, if that's okay? I'm going to go A equals, and I'm going to go yoink, divide by. All right. Talk to me. No, no, no. Uh, we're doing it algebraically still. Oh. Two lines is what? Sorry. I guess let's, let's do the trig, okay? In my homework, I might go to numbers, never on a test. Because okay. if I do something dumb, at least I'll, I, I'm sure Duick is probably looking for the trig equation. He's probably giving out marks for that just in case I do something silly later on. I've got the marks for that. Yes? Okay. M2G. What did you say, Trish? A uh, sign? Uh, Minus. Friction. Friction is what times what? I don't know the normal force. Oh, but look, 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 look. I know another force the same size as the normal force. Oh, hey, this is nice. No component for it. That's nice. I would be okay having a second hill. And so it would be M1G perpendicular. Perpendicular, uh, of course it is, right? Now let's plug in numbers. M2 was uh, 14. 9.8 sine 42 minus mu was 0.23. 15, 9.8 divided by 29. 14 plus 15, I think I can do that in my head, I hope. Fourteen times nine point eight sine forty two minus point two three times fifteen times nine point eight. Double check that felt wrong. Fourteen times nine sine mine point two three fifteen nine close off the top. Okay, I guess that it was right. I think. Do you get one point nine 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 nine? Boy, I made up a nice one. I think is the answer like two point zero zero. 1.9998, which I think to two or three sig figs is still an even 2.0. Doesn't happen very often. That makes up for my earlier mu's that were bigger than one. No, it doesn't. Shut up. Is that okay, Tanisha? Yeah? Happy joy? Okay. Probably I'd make this five marks. And for two marks, do you know what I'd ask for part B? Yeah, I'd fi find the tension. Stop that, Mr. Duck! <laughs> Sorry, but find the tension. Stop that. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I've done one, two, three, four. That, uh, there's only four or five written that you're going to see. I, I guess anything else, I may have forgotten something, but... I guarantee if it's on the written, you've seen it on one of your quizzes somewhere. So I'll also say that. So any questions from the big review or from the homework or anything you want me to emphasize, that was the part one of my tutorial. And some of you had some questions apparently. So from the big review, from the homework, any other things you're wondering about, now is your chance to ask. Yeah. What number? 40, 40? Yeah. Woo! That's a scholarship question. I think. You looked at my online answer key? Yeah. You did? Okay. This one here? Shrink it down a tiny bit, Mr. Duick. Okay. 
Um, this one here, I had to be clever. So they gave me a graph. What are we graphing? What versus what? Distance, Distance versus time squared. Okay. A little different. Um, what are they asking me to find in part A? Acceleration. Acceleration. I'm going to give you a hint. And in fact, in the next unit on work and energy, the last lesson, I'm going to be doing a whole lesson on graphing tricks. So here's the first graphing trick. If they're giving you a graph, and then they ask you to find something that actually doesn't appear on the graph, it's either the slope of the graph or the area. It's going to be one or the other. Slope is what over what? You memorize, what is it, AJ? Watch, I want you to notice what happens. If I go rise over run, but I just look at the units. Rise is the y-axis. Tanisha, what are the units on the y-axis? What does it say in brackets next to the letter D? Meters. What are the units on the x-axis? What does it say next to the letter T? Doesn't say seconds. I got to be, ah. You know what? I'm willing to bet the acceleration is the slope of this graph. I didn't know that, but now that I see it, OK. Sure, it's the slope of this graph. So I'm going to go rise over run. You want the acceleration? And I'd probably use this point and this point. I'd say, you know what? The rise is 0.5. The run is 1.2. I think the acceleration is 0.5 divided by 1.2. Uh, apparently, acceleration is about 0.42 meters, 0.4166. I'll go 0.42 meters per second squared. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Different. Pardon me? Different. different in my answer key? Let me go check. Oh, hello, answer key. Four one seven. Ah, Mr. Duick, you got to be a bit more careful here. This is why this was a scholarship question. At first, I thought it was 0.417, but then I said, wait a minute, how are distance and time squared related? It does say from rest. How about I underline that on my question? So I also said, I've got an equation that relates distance and time squared. What happened to the VIT? from rest. So if I actually write the slope like that, that's rise over run, turns out the slope isn't acceleration. It is meters per second squared. But what do I have by itself on the right? Not a, but a half a. Oh, so if I want to find the acceleration, this is half. You know what I found? I found half the acceleration. This is so to find A, double it. Whatever two times that is. I'm not, this is a scholarship question. I'm not going to give you one this tough to analyze right now. By the end of the year, I might feel comfortable. But I haven't done my lesson on graphing tricks yet. Uh, what's B asking? Oh, coefficient of friction. So I drew a picture and I said, OK, now that I know the acceleration thing, food, now I've done this before. In fact, I think, I think this is the, uh, on your take home quiz, the ski question, I think. The last question, we found mu, but we had to find acceleration first. They gave us values. Here, they gave us a graph. But then it's uh, winner minus loser. Uh, apparently, it's going uh, down the ramp, so friction is acting up the ramp. Who's winning? MG Perl. Who's losing? Friction. And is that okay? Yep. Do you want to print out of this before you go or, or not? Uh, okay, I'm not done, but if, you, if you're leaving early, I can always do a quick printout. Is that all right? Any others? You know what I need to do, Mr. Duick, is. Um, let 
move this underneath here so that it fits on the screen. There we go. And how about writing the answer? Times two, eight point uh, point eight three. Do you want to copy this before you go? No. Okay, and uh, you were away. Make sure you email me your quiz score. It's on the answer keys online. Good, good, good. Anything else? Yep. Twenty nine. You've been working on the review already. Good. The rest of you. Oh, I'm just disappointed. Okay. This one. This one here. So easy that it's tough. I kid you not. I looked at this at first and I was, huh? And I said, well, maybe I better do a good, oh, I don't want fit page, fit width. So maybe I better do a good free body diagram. So here's what I said. What are the forces acting on the car? Gravity, normal force, and tension. I ignored the parachute. I just said, you know what? There's a cord tugging on the car. Tension. So I said, since they gave me the mass of the dragster, the car, and the acceleration of the car, I'll draw force, I'll write force equations for the car. Who's winning? Tension. Who's losing? Uh, no one. Tension equals MA. Did they tell me the mass? Yeah, did they give me, oh, holy smokes, tension just popped out of here. Do you see why, what I mean by this is so easy that it's tough? I didn't see that at first, and all of a sudden I was, oh, it's just MA because the only force acting on the car horizontally is tension. This is F equals MA. Kind of cool. So you got 2,000 newtons, 2 times 10 to the 3. Any others? Yep. Number 5. Ooh, this one was tough. Okay. How many masses? Three. Oh, no friction. Whew, that was at least nice. So they want the acceleration. I said, well, which one's bigger, this one or that one? I said, you know what? If it's going to be falling, it's falling this way. You with me so far? So I said, what are the forces acting? M3G, tension 2, uh, tension 1, tension 2, M2G, F normal. Tension one, M one. Who's winning here? So anything that ends up pointing down on this side is going to be winner plus. Anything that ends up pointing up on this side is going to be loser minus. So I said, okay, here we go. I said, winner, loser, winner. Oh, they cancel. Loser. Winner, oh, they cancel. I'm noticing I didn't write the plus tensions, minus tensions. I have a feeling I was worried I was going to run out of room or I couldn't fit it in on the screen. But the tensions cancel. I ended up with winner, minus loser. Now you might say, hey, Mr. Duick, where'd this go? It's not in the same direction as the rope. Because there's no friction, it doesn't affect the question. M2G doesn't show up. Uh, equals the mass of all of them times A. How do I get the A by itself? Divide by the mass of all of them. Is that all right? Had there been friction, then I would have had minus friction, which is mu times the normal force. I don't know the normal force. And then M2G would have showed up. But no friction. OK. M2 did show up on this side, though. Any others? Stick around for two seconds. You, 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 want, you want copies, right? Yeah. If we're done, then we're, is anything else? So who are my block E and Fs? I'll be around tomorrow for one-on-one -on -one help, although because I've turned away all my other students, they're gonna, my other students will be my, kind of my first priority, but you can certainly come here. I'm sticking around until 4.30 or 5 tomorrow as well. But this is my big covering the whole unit in one fell swoop tutorial. Uh, let me just pause the video.